Oh, dude. They rented out the fucking skyscraper for the party. Oh my god. The, oh my god, they got fucking flashing lights and everything. This is gonna be fucking oh. Clark! Clark! Hey! Oh my god, it's DG! How are oh, you doing? Oh, oh my, my god, Lord. you're healing up! Oh yeah, dude, dude. I look like a fucking mangled fucking strawberry, dude. You don't gotta say anything to me. You are so pink. So pink and so many holes all over you, seeping with pus. I know, dude. You shave your beard. Oh, yeah, I did for the, you know, for the premiere party. Oh, dude, dude. You know, sad that America didn't choose me, but, like, I'm happy I still get to be here, even though, you know, just because, you know, I was had the opportunity to be on the show. Like, I'm glad, like, you guys are letting me do this. Yeah, I mean, that seems, you know, I mean, you're you're honorarily part of the cast. Yeah, hi, DJ. Oh, hey, what's up, little marble dude? We're in Gates, DJ. We got Gates in the house. C congratulations, dude. Congratulations. Where's the ring? Oh, well, uh, uh, fun thing about that. <laughs> Sister Marble is the ring. <laughs> I love me a ring. But I get to still roll around whenever I want to, so it's like a, I'm a diamond placement, but I can get off the ring. Yeah, I don't want to be somebody who traps her, but, you know, if she ever makes me mad, maybe I'll just will bond her to the ring, you know. She can't leave. She's going to marry me. Hey, you are not Christian Grey. This is not Fifty Shades of Grey. You signed a contract. Oh, oh, nice to see all you guys, dude. Huh. I would ask for a hug, but I don't think anybody wants to hug a fucking burn victim. Well, I think it would hurt you more than anything. You know I'm a patter. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, pat on the... Oh, uh, yeah. Well, can you tell me who won, at least? Oh, uh, well, we're not supposed to say until the finale but I, aired, No, I was, like, know, kind of part know. of the cast, like, you know. Uh, well, but, the, see, the fact is, you don't know. Yeah, but, like... And all the people on the cast, they know, so... Yeah, but, like, I'm at the premiere party, and, like, uh, you know. Uh... This is awkward. This is really awkward. Maybe you should, uh, DG, you know, maybe you should, uh, ask Sister No... You know? Why would I ask her? I don't know. I mean, Why would I ask? Have... Like, she's not my fucking friend. I mean, like, we're cool with each other, but, like, you're my friend, dude. Why don't you just fucking tell me who won it? Well, because I just think that you might want to hear... It's because I'm a burn victim, isn't it? No, no, DG, no. It's because I'm fucking hideous, isn't it, dude? No, not at all. Not at all, DG. It's just, look me know, in the I'm... eyes. You can't even look me in the eyes. I'm look... Uh, well... You can't even look this direction, dude. They're bloodshot, DG. It kind of makes my eyes water. It's like when somebody has a cold and you hear their voice scratching and your eyes start to water up. It's the medical goat weed. I can't, you know, they're giving it to me for the pain. Well, that's good. You know, Dr. Xavier is here. No, I haven't seen him yet. You're the first person I fucking ran into. I, t I had to take the bus here, dude. You know, you know, they don't like they're not going to let me buy an ATV again. Well, I mean, that, you know, Saul down at the ATV store, he does not want to get sued. And you caused a huge forest fire. You're lucky that they're even going to have ATVs on the island anymore. Oh, well, it's not, it wasn't my fault, dude. Somebody ran me off the road. Okay, DG, if that's what you say. I so mean, you're believing all? You're believing Nancy Sox's story that I was fucking fucked up. Uh, you believe that shit, dude? I mean, I Tristan said you were wobbling before you came over to the ATV, and Beverly and I had no idea. So. Well, I mean, I watched you drink. So much that night, DG, and you know I can't fucking believe you two. You uh, turn your back. You just gave me an award ceremony, like you did this whole fucking big thing, and now you're just not even letting me know. Who, like you're keeping me on the outs. I feel like I fucking like my whole life's over, dude. No, DG, no, it's not. Look, we're going to. We'll all go inside. We'll have a good time. And listen, seriously, if you ask Sister No who won, I know for a fact that she will be able to tell you a fun little story about that. Uh. Okay. Well, we're gonna go inside, DG. Uh, I, you're not very fast, so we're gonna walk ahead of you. But like. <laughs> Sister Mama, hold on! We see you inside, Mary! See you inside! Sister Mama! See, see you later, DG. See you at the party. Yeah. Uh. 
See you inside, DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you guys. Nice, nice seeing you, dudes. You know, see you inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We love you. Yeah, you do. Oh my God, it's Sister No. Come on, baby. Come on. Sister No, Big Red. Come on, we're here. How's it going? Let's go inside. It's so good to see you. How's it going? It's going well. Are you? I mean, I'm so glad to see you. How are you doing? How the fuck do you think I'm doing, Clark? <laughs> You're probably doing great. I'm on cloud fucking nine right now, but you know, the thing is, is I always knew it would happen. I always knew it would be me. What do you mean? I knew it was going to be me from the moment they said I was going to be on the show. Well, I mean, you... I have the winner attitude. You got to see that shit exactly. to make it happen, but don't tell anybody. You have to be able to manifest it. You know they said they take away all my money if I told somebody I won? Really? Oh, uh, so... Really? Yeah, DG, that's what I was trying to tell you. I, like, kept trying to tell you in code. What the hell is he doing here? Who's this guy? I, I'm not, I'm not getting my money taken away if he heard that. No, no DG, no. he's a good guy. He won't say nothing. DG? That's not fucking DG. Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's, well, sister, no, I mean, like, we don't know how many interactions we've had in total, but, like, you know me. What is this homeless fucking goat doing here? What, do they not have security? Big, where's Big Red at? Like, Big Red, there's a scary, nasty, homeless goat looking at me. We, we rough him up a little bit. <laughs> oh, 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 what are you doing, dude? I'm already fucked up. <laughs> I'm barking like a fucking dog at you. Don't get near my lady again, you fucking hobo. Toy. <laughs> Come on, babe. You can't, you can't spin on DG, Big Red. That's big no-no. Oh, he can't hear you. He already went inside with Sister No. He doesn't care about that kind of stuff. He's got second place money. <laughs> I, I, I still can't believe that Sister No came up here and I still don't know who won. Oh, well, that, that's a good thing, DG. Just, you'll have to watch this show like everybody else. You think, like, maybe you could go inside, like, get me, like, a motorized scooter? Uh, yeah, well, like, uh, well, yeah, we'll go inside Clark, and, uh... Clark, Clark, come here. Yeah. I, th I think motorized scooters are a little too close to ATVs. Oh. I'm not sure he should have one. Yeah, you're right. They do have batteries. Batteries and wheels. Oh, uh, DG, yeah, no. Uh, no, why? Sorry. No on the ATV. I can hardly walk, dude. I'm on crutches. Well, uh, Sorry. You're going to have to find a way to get inside, uh, besides, besides motorized anything. Too soon. Oh, okay. fucking see you later, dude. What the fuck happened? See you inside, dude. I love you. Uh, Beverly and Clark County. Thank you. Oh my god. I can't wait to get fuck. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. You about to see me on the fucking big screen. I'm a big shot being on reality television. Yeah, fucking don't speak like that when we're in here. We're civilized. Remember that. When are we gonna fuck like that later? You gonna talk daddy to me? Yeah, daddy. Oh, I did. Yeah, daddy. You gonna be my little twink boy? Hold on, step out of the way of this homeless man. I don't want you to catch his AIDS or something. Ew. Tristan, dude. Ew. Tristan. I'm not homeless, dude. I don't have AIDS. It's me, dude. DG. Oh my god. DG, what the fuck did they... Did you leave, like, against medical advice? What are you talking about, dude? No, they said I'm good to go, like, to rest up and shit, like... DG, you look like you... I... Uh... I gotta go. You look fucking disgusting. <laughs> Do it. Uh, come on, baby. I'm sorry about that, DG, but she, she gives my, she, he, I don't know what it is, but they give major blowjobs. <laughs> That's not a dig at transgender people, sex gremlins, it's kind of, you know, they you know, they got a pussy, but sometimes they can have a dick. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, I gotta drag these fucking legs that don't work. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Name? Yeah, uh, dairy guy. Uh, let me see here. Uh, not on the list. Sorry, private event tonight. Uh, no, dude, like, check again, dude. I w those guys that just went in, Clark, Beverly, Tristan, Brandon, Sister yep, Marble, Sister... they're on the list. Yeah, dude, I'm with them, but yeah, I was part nope, of the show. Nope, not on the list. I was part of the show, though. Well, right here, look, 
Here's the clipboard right here. Everybody that was on the cast right here all the way down. Yeah, but I was part of the cast. E, the 13th member. All 13 members of the cast have checked in. So, sir, move it along. No, but dude, what I'm trying to tell you, dude, is I was part of the cast. Then why isn't your name on the list? And why They must have forgot there... some. Call, call up to your guy, dude, to fucking talk to me like, wait, I'm fucking Dairy Guy. You saw me on the fucking television, dude, just a couple days ago. Yeah, I know you're Dairy Guy, you pathetic, drunk piece of shit. Oh, so you believe Nancy Sachs' story? Dude, you ran over a guy and then drove off a cliff drunk after the ceremony. What kind of hero are you? Sure, you took a bullet in the war. Big fucking deal. Cry me a river, Lieutenant Dan. Move along. I can't believe you treat a veteran that way. I only treat drunk, homeless, disgusting veterans that way. Patooey! Oh, dude, another loogie? Are you fucking serious? Oh my god, I don't know what the fuck has gotten into this. Fuck you, dude. Go fuck yourself. Get out of here. You're the person. You're the type of person that makes veterans do heroin. As if. Something going on here. <laughs> what? What's going on here? This dude hates veterans. Oh no no no! This guy is a homeless drunkard. That's DG Dairy Guy. Yeah, the guy that almost killed all the nursery. <laughs> yeah, kids. Dairy Guy. Yeah, the guy. The guy who the news is lying about, dude. You know they never released my blood alcohol content, so you don't know I was drunk. That's just what Nancy Sachs wants to believe you to believe. Hmm. Well, what was your blood alcohol content? Point zero seven, right below the legal limit. Of course, by the time they found me, it was that. Well, excuse us, sir. We're. I'm just gonna take this homeless vagrant that you call, and just we're gonna talk a little bit, okay? Sorry for the disturbance. Yep, no problem, ma'am. No problem. Anytime, uh, anytime. <laughs> Hot ass. Hot ass. I don't see very many humans on a daily, but I just gotta say, you got some of the biggest zombies I've ever seen, man. Thank you. I'm glad you like them. Like that you let them hang out all like that. I don't believe in wearing bras myself. Nope. Never did. You know, my mom used to wear them, but my Aunt Judy never did. Well, thank God you don't got them saggy little fucking, you know, fucking fried eggs that are stapled on to like a wall or something. No, these ones are nice, young, and perky. They look fake as fuck, but I love it. I do have, I did have a few breast augmentations oh my over God. my day. Oh my God, what's your name? Mirapose. Mirapose. Nice to meet you, dairy guy. I'm sure you know who I am. Well, yeah, I mean, I have heard a little bit about you over the, in the past. You know I'm a hero? I have heard that, you know, and one thing I have heard is people with purple hearts have huge purple penis heads. <laughs> it's not purple, but it's fucking huge, baby. What do you say you and I go dancing at the Big Brother party and uh, then we can get out of here and bust each other's holes open. <laughs> you want to bust my hole open? I'm a pegger, baby. I am a pegger. You're a pegger. Mirapose loves to peg. Are you into pegging? I feel like you might be, baby. I would never admit it, but for you, I would. <laughs> so what do you say, honey? Should we get to the party? Uh, well, yeah, that's just the thing, though, is like I was part of the cast, but like they're not letting me in. Everybody's giving me the cold shoulder because apparently I look like a fucking fried pickle. I think you look more like a sea cucumber bursting to the surface of a beautiful beach. Oh, is that beautiful beach a metaphor for that pussy? <laughs> you'll have to see if my sandy shores provide enough wave for the surf. You'll have to find a way if my sandy hook finds a way into that crevice. <laughs> it's been a while, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> You've got me rock hard already, dude. Oh, I love to see it. I love the red rocket aspect of a goat's penis. <laughs> the, that's why I was trying to tell you. It's, it, oh my god, dude, it's turning purple. It's so fucking hard. I knew you'd have a big purple-headed penis, Derry. Dude, if you could get me into this party, I'll put it in you right as soon as we get in. Let's just go. I can get you in the party, Derry. I own the building. Yeah, you, who the fuck are you? Mirapose. <laughs> and what are you doing here? I there are like only a few humans here, and I know all of them. 
I guess there's a new one to add to your Pokédex. <laughs> I'm gonna put you right next to Pikachu. Ooh. I want a Pikachu. <laughs> I'm gonna Pokémon go to your pole. Uh, uh, alrighty, let's go. Let's go then. Uh. Texas Jake? Yeah, what is it, ma'am? Mirror pose, Miss Mirror pose, madam. Nice ass, by the way. You could bounce a coin off that thing. Didn't really realize earlier that I was hitting on my boss when you came up. But things change. Things change in a few seconds on these things. Yeah, they do. Listen, me and my friend here. We're gonna go inside, okay? Is that all right? Me and Derry? You mean this guy right here? You wanna take this guy inside, really? This thing? I'm a hero, dude. Stop referring to me as a thing. You know, I'm about to tap that ass and you fucking wish you could, dude. Yeah, <laughs> you're goddamn right, dude. Give me Nux. I'll give you Nux on that one. Now let me the fuck in. All right, yeah. You two go in and enjoy your evening. Uh, just try not to disturb the big brother folks they they did rent out the party for the evening so yeah cool and i just want to let you know that texas fucking sucks whoa 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 whoa, whoa. wish i was back in texas i miss those wide open skies sure you do sandy shore you look like a fucking squirrel you fucking bitch ass i will fucking come back here and murder you all right now, Derry, let's not insult the employees. <laughs> You'd cover for me if I did, though, wouldn't you? I'm gonna cover you in all sorts of things, Daddy. <laughs> oh, fake dildo semen? Oh, yeah, I got a refill of the semen on Amazon. How often do you do this till I even needed a refill? I like to stimulate myself, too. I like to pretend, I like to stroke the penis and pretend it's mine, and one way to simulate that is to squirt some ejaculate when you're done. Daddy. You could say anything and call me daddy and I'll be good. Oh, are those your friends over there? Yeah, yeah, you know what? Like, kinda. I don't even know if they are my fucking friends. Clark, look, it's DG! Got in! Oh, DG, you finally made it! Hey, how's it going, dude? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing talking to me like that? You weren't even going to let me in in this fucking party, and you knew it. I had no... What do you mean, DG? You weren't on the list? My name wasn't on the list, dude. And Texas fucking Jake over there wasn't letting me in. He was fucking spit on me just like everybody else, just like you fucking let everyone do. I, I didn't mean to. I mean, I I tried to do the right thing by putting a statue of you up. I didn't know. I mean, like... Oh, uh, you put a statue of me up, but you let fake news run on the TV all fucking day. DG, the news is not fake. Sorry, I mean, sometimes you have to admit the truth, and this time is one of them. Uh, no, sometimes I gotta admit my truth, and the truth is, is that I have a woman. I now have a girlfriend. Oh, girlfriend. <laughs> you be my girlfriend? I mean, you're trying to fuck me in the ass. She's about to fuck me in the ass, dudes. Oh my god, DG, give me nucks on that I'll one. I'll give you nucks on that one, dude. Hold on, did, did DG just say he's about to get fucked in the ass? This lady's about to fuck DG's ass! Oh my god, what a coincidence, I'm getting fucked in the ass right now! I didn't know they let people have sex at these parties! <laughs> you wanna do it? Guys, I don't think this is a sex party. I think Tristan's just a fucking animal. Well, I mean, Julie Chen Moonves and her husband are having sex over there. Must be one of them Hollywood parties that we haven't really had a chance to go to. Beverly Hills! Sex at the party, yeah! Gimme, gimme! Gimme, gimme! Having sex after Big Brother! All right, uh, anyway, DG, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, uh, we're having a cast party. Wrapping up the cast party, we're all going back to Big Red Penis Island, and we're going to watch uh, the live feeds together. So, you, hold on. You coming? You're going to watch what? The live feeds? Yeah, we're going to watch back the live feeds from the show and, like, laugh at all the jokes and relive all the fun moments that we had together and, you know, talk about all the inside bits. So, you're going there, like, you're going there, like, right now? Because I kind of, I kind of had plans after this. Clark, Beverly, are you coming? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're leaving right now. DG, we'll see you there. DG, if you want to, you go whatever, you go and get your ass fucked. We're going to be watching the whole live feeds. All nine weeks of live feeds. So we're going to be there for a long time. Come on over. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, dude. 
I can't wait to see the scene where Sister Carissa gets voted out. Oh, sorry, DG. Spoilers. <laughs> you ready for this, baby? I've been dying for it, Derry. You ready to get your ass pounded? Yes, I am. Mirapose likes that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Ooh, mm, tight, 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 tight. Dude, oh my god, I forgot to tell you this. There's this guy who doesn't, he doesn't work in my department, but we have meetings with him sometimes. I've, I've seen him a couple of times. I just saw him in person today. I'm going to take a picture of this man because this is who's going to be. He's this. He is literally Doctor Xavier. Really? He sounds just like him. Oh God, no! We had a meeting with him. Like I need like this. His picture needs to be made. Like Doctor Xavier <laughs> needs to be edited because this man is Doctor Xavier. Like he has like this thick mustache, and he's just like. We had this first meeting with him, and he's just like, "How's everything going on your end?" Ooh. And he's just like, but he's like talking about like code, but he's like Doctor Xavier. Like, making these, like, corny <laughs> fucking jokes about it. Like, he sounds just like him. The next time I have a meeting with him, I'm going to record him so you can yes. see it full force. It's the future. And RJ actually went ahead and recorded a clip of that man. Uh, I totally hear the resemblance. So the, 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 the interpretation that you have of groups is not what the first implementation of groups are going to be, if I understand you correctly. So what we are going to do is we're going to allow people to create a pattern eventually not just yet uh, we're going to allow people to create group patterns and those types of group patterns will be similar to what you see from an ansible group vars perspective yes his name is <laughs> his whole name <laughs> his name <laughs> his name is <laughs> edit that out don't put his name no, in i here. know i know i won't that's fucking hilarious that sounds insufferable a real I, like i've really tried to make dr xavier an insufferable character he's actually kind of a nice guy he's like a likable doctor dr xavier but he I sounds think. just like him and he was talking to, i was just overhearing him and he's he walked over to some guy's desk today he's like you know um he's like oh hey van hey what's going on I haven't seen you in a while listen he's like I, you know, the supply chain thing hasn't really affected me up until today. And then I came into work today and you know what? Like they, they just didn't have any fucks. They didn't. And I couldn't find one anywhere. No. Not on Amazon. Not on Google. They didn't have one anywhere. And he's like, oh, ho, 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 ho. he's like, I thought you'd like that. No. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the that's kind of guy awful. he is. <laughs> he like got real quiet. He's like, they didn't have any fucks. Oh my god. Then it turns out this man has a wife. What? Yeah, he's not gay. <laughs> he's like, yeah, like, I'm gonna take a vacation next week, and uh, y you know, like, he he's like, oh, where are you going? He's like, oh, New Jersey, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, my wife, she grew up there. She spent the age from yeah. 3 to 12 there, and you know, it's kind of a nostalgia trip for her, and oh. uh, she just got done with a surgery, and I just needed some time off. <laughs> Okay, well. I heard so much shit about this man. <laughs> That's how it goes. These people in office jobs, they'll just talk and talk and talk for no they'll reason. They'll talk all goddamn day. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. They'll talk all goddamn day. I knew so many like intricate things about... I, I know Desiree Polizzi's husband almost died, but got like a liver transplant and changed their whole life. And now they've dedicated their life to like that, whatever that... Whatever that cause is that allows you to donate, you know, become an organ donor, whatever the company or the organization, like, live. I, could, you know, I couldn't say what whatever it is, the hell yeah, it I know is. what you mean. They're all about it. She's got a license plate that says it. I mean, I would, too, but it's just, like, I know so much about these people just because the, they'll just give over right. so much info. Right. They just talk about so much stupid shit that's not work at work. Right. But and at I the mean, same hey, time, it's kind of cool. You got to be able to pass the time somehow. I mean, fuck. Yeah, 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 for sure. Now, does your does this place have like an in office chat? Because I've that seems. I remember when I worked at Assurance. I mean, I would always be like using the in office chat to like I am with Nicholas and like with mm -hmm. uh, Amanda and all the other people. It seems so dumb now because I mean I wasn't saying anything like wrong. But I was literally having like full on conversations all day long with my friends on IM. You know what I mean? It seems like I shouldn't have been doing that, but hey, you know. Yeah, got in well, trouble. I mean, yeah, I mean, we have in office chat like at Victoria's Secret. We use Teams. Yeah. And so I would I would bullshit with people all day on Teams. 
Mm-hmm. It was kind of hard to make friends there, though. I mean, I made friends, obviously, but like it was, it's you don't really like get a circle of people to do it with. But you find the people who it's okay to like vent and just bullshit gotcha. with and like talk shit. But yeah, we have we use fucking Skype of all things. That oh, well, I shouldn't say it. it right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We use Skype of all things, which is fucking stupid because Skype is like it makes me like not want to use Skype for this because Skype is such a dumb, stupid application. (laughs) It really is. Yeah, it, I mean, do, do you prefer Zoom in that sense? Then no, like, no, we use just like th- this is how stupid it is. We use Zoom for video calls and like all of our meetings, mm-hmm. but specifically, we'll use Skype to IM and to share our screen. We won't use Zoom to share our screen. We use Skype weird it's fucking dumb when they when we could use teams because they already pay for teams we just don't use it so like they're just wasting money and then not using the thing that they pay for well skype comes with like the package that gives you teams we use skype for business i I I, I don't know why the fuck they use it like messages disappear all the time it's just dumb yeah that doesn't sound productive at all it's not but they do it's just like such a big company that like things happen like it takes forever to make change happen they were always having issues with that department at assurant because obviously there are people who work at assurant processing loans for that company and they were always having issues <laughs> at assurant you know constantly updating their manuals or whatever or having you know yes yeah dude and because i mean there are times that they've been sanctioned too i mean maybe not but i know like wells fargo has certainly been sanctioned by you know the consumer protection finance board and all that stuff and that that wreaked havoc at assurance so i'm sure like they have a bunch of red flags about that there too oh dude we have it's such a regulatory process for everything yeah everything it's insane elizabeth warren is like yes (laughs) <laughs> right, right. She's having a success on that. You have any ounce of code that you want to deploy, it has to go through like 10 different channels. Really? Which makes me wonder how any like big company like this ever gets anything done. <laughs> right, if so many people are double checking everything. Yeah, I mean like auto- we have automated systems that double check everything. It has to go through like all these like certification processes because it would be really bad, you know, if this major company had any sort of <laughs> like hacker get into it at all or any sort of, of course, like uh, yeah absolutely anything like that it would be really really bad it would it would based yeah i mean i i i mean it's certainly a major financial institution so we definitely <laughs> wouldn't you know definitely don't want you know that to be compromised in any way but i mean it seems like everybody's getting compromised all the time these days yeah Mm -hmm. I'm constantly, I mean, before my email, like, I guess my email just maxed out, austinzack00 at yahoo.com. It does not receive any new emails, and (laughs) I don't know how to, uh, you know, so I've just moved on, you know, may it rest in peace. (laughs) You know, not deleting any? (laughs) Yeah, well, I mean, I cleared the inbox, but no new emails would come in, like, knowing that somebody was like, I would have Taylor send me an email, and it wouldn't come through. That's weird. And still hasn't, like, months and months and months later, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even give her an error? No. Yeah, it just looks like it was sent. So, I mean, there have That's been times weird. that I'm, I'm sure I've missed emails from people. You know, I, I kept thinking, like, why hasn't Rachel Jensen emailed me back? Well, she might have. You know, I don't know. Right. Before my email maxed out, I was always getting emails telling me, like, oh, you've probably been compromised. Your bank information has probably been compromised. or You changed all your passwords yeah, now. Exactly. There's some it's big data fuck. leak that happened, so we can't guarantee your information. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, thanks a lot. I mean... Right. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome to Mote, folks. <laughs> hello and welcome. <laughs> uh, you know, it's always fun when we start with a, a sidebar that, you know, then brings us into <laughs> the show. Uh, one thing I feel like we 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 mentioned that we wanted to do this and then we didn't get a chance to because, you know, we got more excited about other storylines or whatever. Ray Liotta died. <laughs> he did. He did. And, you know, listen, I've seen Ray Liotta in other movies. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to pretend I was a huge fan of the man, but I was a huge fan of Tommy Versetti, his character in Grand Theft Auto Vice City. I think the greatest uh, protagonist of the series. And you're on record on the show saying it. Exactly. And uh, so, God... For that alone, you know, I, I've never seen Goodfellas. That's been coming up a lot You've lately. You've never seen Goodfellas? I've never seen Goodfellas. I want to. You know, I just, I, 
I don't know. I'm going to watch it, obviously. But, you know, I haven't yet. And it's, pretty, it's a pretty good movie. I don't think it's all it's cracked up to be, but it's a pretty good one. Yeah. I mean, I really like... I mean, it's Martin Scorsese, right? You know? I, yeah, he's amazing. And I really liked The Irishman when, you know, I, I mean, it's... It, it, it took... Oh, it's you, better than The Irishman. I believe sure. that, yeah. I mean, because apparently, you know, you know, his glory days are, <laughs> you know, behind him. But I don't know. Rest in peace, Tommy Versetti. Rest in peace, Ray, Ray Liotta. Liotta. So sudden. So seemingly out of nowhere, you know? Who 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 mentioned Ray Liotta dying that day, you know? Who <laughs> which psychic took him out cuz it wasn't me. Right. It was not me. You know, also I wanted to ask a couple weeks ago before you finally made the Facebook switch from you know, your fake profile to... Not a fake profile, but you know what I mean. It was fake profile. Yeah. Oh, well, I didn't want to say that because it sounds like you're up to nefarious deeds. It was just a profile. It was like a troll it account like, more than anything. I would anything. consider it, yeah, like an anonymous profile right. almost. But now you've made the prof- the switch back to having a more public uh, appearance on it. I mean, obviously it's just your name. But <laughs> a couple weeks ago when we were talking about Minecraft, you sent Cole Emery Robertson a message. Did he ever... Has there been any update on that? Never. Never message me back. I'll check again. Maybe now you could send, like, cancel the request and send a new one as RJ Quillen, and maybe that'll give us some traction. Yeah, let me try to find it real quick. Yep, never message me back. Let me go to his profile. <laughs> How dare you, Cole? We used to play Minecraft together. Cancel request. Of course he wouldn't know Harris Mallard, though, so, I mean, this really might, you know, this might give us a little more traction on that. I said, hey, we used to play Minecraft together. <laughs> Message me back. <laughs> I said, message me Mac on accident. So I'm going to send him a picture of a, a Mac truck, the Mac truck from Cars. <laughs> you know, gotta say, rest in peace to the John Ratzenberger cameos in every Pixar movie. They just don't do that anymore. All good things must come to an end, I guess. Apparently, all the fun has to die. All the, f- <laughs> all the fun in the world has to die. Right. You know, speaking of pop culture, you you hear this shit about, I don't know if we've talked about it, you hear this shit about Bob Saget's sexual abuse allegations? Taylor's tried to bring it up to me before, and I refuse to listen to it. <laughs> me too! <laughs> Stephanie's been doing it, and I'm just like, Stephanie, that's fucking not true. And she's like, well, she's like, it, it all literally, I looked it up, it all boils down to the fact that at the 2008 Comedy Central roast of Bob Saget, three comedians made fun of him for being a pedophile. And she's like, why would they make jokes like that if it wasn't true? And I'm like, Be- well, one, because they're jokes, and two, because it's so outlandish right. to think that he would be a pedophile. Do I think the jokes are in bad taste? Yes, I do. I don't think of it's... Of course. But, like, that's not evidence. Like, no. Mary, Kate, and Ashley Olsen came out and, were, like, never said anything about him. They said he's a good guy. Yeah, exactly. I t- when she tried to bring it up to me, I was like, Taylor, absolutely not. I refuse to hear that. Nobody's ever mentioned that. Nobody's ever said that, given that any creep... I, like, completely shut it down. It all <laughs> happened after he died. Yeah, I, like, completely... <laughs> completely shut it down i'm like no i can compl- so it was like crazy the amount of honor i was giving to bob saget in this me too combo. literally the other night i was hanging out with stephanie over the weekend i got pissed <laughs> i was genuinely mad like we had to stop doing what we were doing because I, I was like we have to shut this conversation down it was awkward fuck <laughs> as only it can be when you get in an argument with your friends. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I was like, I was like, he was such a wholesome TV dad. Like, he really was. And she's like, well, so is Bill Cosby. I mean, that is true. And what was annoying me is she didn't even necessarily believe it. She's just like, it's just weird. And I'm like, well, I refuse to let you speak about Bob Saget this way. <laughs> yeah, right, literally, yeah. Right, it's fucked up to do to a man after he's dead. It, literally, and I mean, it doesn't... He was so respected. It's not like anybody, as far as I know... It's not like anybody has come out after he died and said, like, you know, now that he's passed, I finally feel free to tell you that Bob Saget literally raped me. You know what I mean? Like, nobody has said that as far as I know. They haven't. I looked it up just a couple days ago. I mean, even, like, the fact checkers on fucking Google, who are apparently owned by the liberal media. Of course. Which means (laughs) Hollywood might (laughs) have their hand in their pocket. Who knows? I don't believe that at all. No. But even they were saying, like, these allegations are false and completely baseless. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I mean there's you know, obviously there's a there was a difference between Danny Tanner 
and Bob Saget, the comedian, because right. obviously he was a filthy comedian. You know? He wanted to be filthy, yeah. He wanted to like make himself different. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, yeah, he talked about his cock, and you know, I think he made off-color jokes about like his daughter. You know, or or like maybe even like Mary Kate and Ashley, like a joke about like what if Danny fucked Michelle, you know, something like that, like something in. Poor That's taste. what comedians do, though. They're exactly. like they they have to push the line, like. And I mean, it's not it's not that he and you know the standards of when he was making these jokes in the nineties and the early two thousands. Right. I was even in two thousand eight. They had every like we thought those jokes were funny about exactly. him like raping. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it sounds it's bad, awful, but. Like, but I mean, <laughs> terrible justification but it's like i mean that you can't really judge people out of their time because we didn't culturally we were more accepting of stuff like that and now we're not right and it's good and it's progress it's good progress but you can't say well bob saget was a pedophile because he joked about i mean i I guess you can but i mean it doesn't i don't know i think it's wrong right i I think so too i'm like I'm like, I think if it were true, they probably wouldn't joke about it. Exactly, right. I mean, if they actually knew, unless it's the Hollywood liberals rubbing it in our face that they're pedophiles and doing it right in front of our face. Right, it's fucking Jeff Ross. He's, like, not a fucking... (laughs) He's, like, known to be a savage roaster. Mm Mm-hmm. And they're using him like he's the Bible. It's Jeff Ross. He doesn't have much, like, respect. I did watch the video, though, that she showed me about it. What was uncomfortable is John Stamos made a joke about it. Well, that would that made what that one. I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird that he would say that. What did he say? Do you remember? Like, what was the? I kind of want to like look. I mean, it was really short. Just joke about how Bob Saget fucked Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen when they were babies. You know, the whole time Bob and I were doing Full House, he was also hosting America's Funniest Home Videos. What a tough gig that must have been, huh? His entire job consisted of saying, "Take a look at this." is what he used to say to Mary Kate Olsen in her dressing room. I can't find it easily. I mean, you could probably look at it. You'd probably have to, like, find it in the actual roast. I see. I see. If this was on, like, a TikTok or something. Oh, but, I like, see, you'd look you. up John Stamos, Bob Saget. The first thing that comes up, John Stamos' tear-jerking memorial speech for Bob Saget. <laughs> yeah, which, like, if he was a child molester, would he really go to those lengths? Yeah, I mean, maybe... No! no! But, you know, hey, they all did stand by Lori Laughlin when she did the college admissions scandal. So, I mean, what can you say? Yeah, well, you know, yeah. But then again, so did we. We did a whole episode about it. <laughs> we really did, yeah. I mean, it's not a big deal. We are ardent supporters of the cast of Full House. I mean, <laughs> except, I mean... It really helped me develop morals and know what a family was. For sure. I mean, in a lot of ways, you know, I as I got an older, I was like, I think that's part of the thing that I really liked about the show was the familial aspect that was missing from my own life in a lot of ways. Yeah. Divorced family you know, men in and out of my mom's, that sounds awful, but I mean, for years, yeah, men in and out of my mom's bedroom, new boyfriends, new long-term companions that then disappeared, you know, didn't, didn't obviously, I didn't think it had any effect on me, but then, you know, I watched Full House and I'm like, now that's a family. Right. That's comforting. (laughs) Yeah. That's family. And God, it's such comfort, such comfort. And you know, I don't think we ever honored Bob Saget when he passed away because I, I, how could I don't know that? how we didn't. But if we didn't, and whether or not we did, we are now. May God rest yeah. his soul. Cracked his noggin and went to bed. Don't crack your noggin <laughs> and go to bed, folks. Don't crack your noggin and go to bed. <laughs> May God rest his soul, cracked his <laughs> noggin, and went to bed. It sounds like a nursery rhyme. Like it was a creepy n- Yeah. Cracked his noggin and went to bed. Well, I mean, that's what happens in, uh, what, Rain, Rain, Go Away? Come again some other day. The, he went to bed and knocked his head and couldn't get up in the morning. Oh, shit, you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's dark. Shane Dawson, get on the conspiracies. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, speaking of conspiracies, have you heard some of the conspiracies regarding Bob Saget's death? Um, yes, I have, but I don't think there's really anything to No, them. I mean, there's just people like there was foul play and he was murdered. No, I think he was I think he was on medications and maybe drank on it and it just didn't like he passed out with probably dehydrated. Cracked his noggin. I think it was a freak accident. Yeah. And it's so sad, too, because I remember, I mean, I had been following Bob Saget. I still follow Bob Saget on Twitter. And uh, just, you know, as a full house, just to see what my full house father is doing. 
And I remember him, like when he tweeted his last tweet. Obviously, I didn't know it would be his last tweet, but he it was so like sad in retrospect because it's like just got off stage, did an amazing set. Like this is the best night of my life. Like you know what I mean? Like some it wasn't exactly Oof. that, but it was very much like very much like what DG said right before his car accident. You know. <laughs> And yeah, so it's like famous, it's there's famous last yeah. words for a reason. It's sad. So may, truly may he rest in peace. May he, Bob Saget rest. There's so many people who've said like tragic things before they've died. <laughs> like, obviously I think David Bowie is one of the best examples. Of course he knew he was going to die. Right. Very tragic things. He let us know though, before he did truly tragic. I mean, truly moving. I mean, truly unforgettable, disgust, not disgusting, but like, like very visceral imagery and, uh, words in those, uh, in those David Bowie tracks. Very Look up prophetic. Here. I'm in heaven. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> right, it's powerful. Uh. Yeah, it's truly one of the greatest albums of all time. Though worth no, absolutely worth agree. being the only one hundred percent on records uh, for sure. Remember when we caught off work when he died? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Immediately went up and bought all these yeah. like David Bowie records. <laughs> yeah. And I remember there was a there was a man there. I remember distinctly like we were going there to buy like older stuff that we didn't have because obviously we already had Black Star. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And so we were going there, and I remember there was a man there, and he bought Black Star. He had, he was like purchasing Black Star at Best Buy at the time. And I remember you and I were talking about, like, this man has no idea what he's getting into. Because he just, it's like the day David Bowie died. Yes. He went to the store and bought his new album because he, you know, probably heard on the news, like, David Bowie released an album two days ago and then died. He goes and buys it and it's like this absolutely insane <laughs> album, you know what I mean? Experimental. <laughs> has nothing to In do the yeah, of like, woman. Has nothing to do with like anything David had like ever done, you know what I mean? Like really <laughs> Yeah, very loosely. Yeah, insane, you know. I, I always wonder what that man thought listening to that album for the first time. I think I think about Sue in a season of crime way more than I'd like to. For some mm-hmm. it just the random things from it pop into my head. <laughs> It's a really good song. You went with that clown. I really prefer the original version, though, the, like, more jazz version. I mean, I love... Oh, me too, for sure. I love the changes that he made to, like, make it work on Black Star, but I really love that original jazzy version. It's oh, so it's, it's, good. it's incredible. I love and it. And I think his performance is better in that one than the more, like, metal... You know, it's not metal, but, you know, that... It, it, I don't know. It's kind of, like, industrial. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. I like his vocal performance in the other version as well, too. Well, in Black Star, he sounds like he's dying. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. But like, and he's like six years younger, or he's uh, two years younger in the other one. So it's like he does sound a little bit better. Yeah, he probably he probably wasn't dying quite as rapidly. <laughs> yeah, right. It was the early onset cancer. <laughs> Fuck. Right. Rest in peace, David. So many Motif honors back to back here. <laughs> right. Wait, David Bowie, rest in absolute peace. You know what? Let's give let's give a, let's give a shout out to Tommy too. I think oh yes, absolutely, one. absolutely. May he Princess, rest in let's peace. Give her Princess, one. yep. <laughs> We're just playing taps constantly in the background of this segment. <laughs> <laughs> Clara. Oh, yep. Clara Freeland. Cast member Clara Freeland. May her soul rest in peace. We were watching last night, and this is something that I wanted to, you know, that was in my notes, but it you just reminded me of it. Last night, we were watching Fifty Shades of Grey, (laughs) and... uh, (laughs) Explains the reference. Yeah, exactly. And there was a scene, and and it's, it's completely out of left field, but I was, she was like, the girl was laying in the bed, you know, Anastasia was laying in the bed, and there was like one scene where because of her bangs, and, you know, a lot of the way I perceive how people look alike is like through their hair for some reason I've noticed. And so because of the bangs, Clara used to have bangs. 
And there was one scene where she was like laying down in the bed, and I'm like, that looks like Clara. <laughs> <laughs> That's Which weird, is like a yeah. huge, huge insult to Dakota Johnson. Like a huge Oh my insult. god. That's what I'm like, no disrespect to Clara, yeah. but Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was all just because of her like the way her bangs were it was just like it looked exactly like uh Clara's Ew. bangs, but in no other way. But you know, I gotta say, I was surprised. I had never watched any of the Fifty Shades of Grey movies. Uh, I think I had seen that you had rated at least the first one. Have you seen any of the others? I've never seen any. I've never seen anyone after that. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, so I, I remember when my grandma and my mom were really into the books and, you know, when it was a huge phenomenon. And I, for some reason in my head, I always pictured that the characters were like 40. So I was really surprised that, like, he was supposed to be 27 and she's younger than that. Because I'm like, you know, whatever. I mean, they obviously there are successful 27-year-old billionaires. But it just, I for some reason, right. with the success of the series being with, like, all these middle-aged women, I really thought that the characters were middle-aged. So that's why they were like, oh, this could happen to me. You know? I don't know why it was so successful with middle-aged women. I really They're don't. They're just horny. And that's the thing. It's like, because, you know... I remember we would sometimes go, like, in Walmart when we would always just, like, hang out at stores, and we would pick up a romance novel, and we would just try to open it to a sex scene, and it's almost impossible. Yeah, there's not that many. Yeah, there's not that many, and obviously, in Fifty Shades of Grey, there's one, like, every 20 pages, you know, (laughs) probably sooner than that, and I remember when we... I've since found out that it was Fifty Shades Freed, the third book, but I have a memory in my head of picking up one of the books and doing that and being like, I'm going to, you know, open this up and see if it's a sex scene. And I'm pretty sure it was at my grandma's house (laughs) because you know how many books she has, you know, and I'm pretty sure it was like out like on her nightstand. And we picked it up, and I'm like, I open it up, and it's like a scene where Christian is dripping like ice cream in Anastasia's pubic hair and licking it out. Jesus. And I remembered reading that, and we were like dying laughing, you know, absolutely hilarious, just because it's like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Just to open it up to that. Like, yeah, exactly. So, you know, I was telling Taylor about that, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure there was a scene, and I looked it up, and yeah, indeed, that is a true scene that happens in the third book, and I guess in the movie. I guess we'll see. They do it in the movie? I guess, yeah. I mean, I uh, I, I guess we'll see. I've only seen, we started the second one, but I uh, only got through the first one. I was just going to say, I went to go see Fifty Shades of Grey in the theaters, oh, and God. I really thought after I got out that I would have sex because of it, and I didn't. Really? I, yep. <laughs> Well, okay, so I assume by the time frame then you you went to see it with Stephanie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. Well, that was notoriously, I mean, that was notoriously a problem in that relationship. (laughs) It was. In fact, it was. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Yeah, but she, uh, you know, I don't know if I could have, like, stood to see that in a theater. It was awkward. It was, I mean, it had me rolling at times because of, like, how truly awful it is yeah it's not <laughs> a very mean, good movie and it's really cringy oh yeah i'm 50 it, it was that thing where he's like i'm 50 shades of fucked up yeah exactly there's that oh my there's god the line where he's like i don't make love i fuck hard <laughs> ew <laughs> oh it's so cringe so cringe and you know i think a part of that like cringeness comes from the fact that like it was started as a Twilight fan fiction. Mm-hmm. And the whole time I was watching it after, you know, telling Taylor that there are a lot of things, like, obviously, none of the, like, obviously, it's not about vampires. It's not set in, like, the same state or anything like that. But just even the visual tone is so similar to Twilight in a lot of ways. Yeah, it really is. It's kind of, like, dark. And, you know, Anastasia, like, at least the way she starts out, she's, like, so nervous and awkward, like, just like Kristen Stewart. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I can totally see, like, the inspiration. And it's disgusting. (laughs) That's what she was thinking of with those people. Because, dude, honestly, by the end of the movie, obviously, you know, it's a movie about sex. How could you not be a little turned on? You know, I wasn't that attracted to the people. But, I mean, it's, like, constantly, I mean, constantly they're having sex. I like to have sex. (laughs) You know what I mean? So, like, of course, you know. But I just, 
by the end of the movie, I mean, truly, and just throughout the whole thing, I'm like, this relationship is so unbelievably toxic. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, unbelievably for sure it's abusive. toxic. And not necessarily because of the BDSM, because I really do think people like Nicholas normalize the BDF, BDSM lifestyle in a in a different way. Mm-hmm. You know, I think you can definitely be a healthy BDSM couple. But he, that, this relationship was not based on any sort of relationship. <laughs> he just wanted to no fucking right. abuse Railer. her. Disgusting. Truly disgusting. I thought I thought I thought it very uncomfortable in the theaters when she was like in his red room mm. and he whipped her like way harder yeah. than she wanted to, and she's like, "Don't you ever do that again?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like the final scene. It was really uncomfortable. It was creepy as fuck. Really cool way to end the movie, though. I thought was like you know, <laughs> right at that. T- I mean, that must be how the book ends. But you know, I was really so. It was like. It doesn't end with any, you know, resolution between them. No, not at all. So I was really expecting the second movie to kind of be, you know, at least start out with them continuing the tension. But, I mean, it's like for like five minutes and then they're back together fucking. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, they just, all of that, all of this, like, build up. They just needed to, they needed to, we need to make these characters fuck everyone. That's why they came to see this. Right. It was ridiculous. I really thought they had something for a second there. But I do got to say, it, it, for me, it worked as a successful aphrodisiac. (laughs) <laughs> oh well congratulations it wasn't you know it wasn't the intention but you know when there was easily a, a 30 minute eaten <laughs> followed by you know a nice you know a nice little the old in out in out exactly yeah exactly <laughs> and so i mean you know i gotta say i i totally get it i you know I, it's not a it's not a good movie but <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> now you'll always like it kind of Exactly. And I mean, it's it's fun to watch. I've like, you know, gone back now and rewatched the whole Twilight series. And it's kind of fun to watch these these mega successful series, even if they're cringe, because it's like just fun to. Yeah, they're fun at this point. They're they're still well made movies. You know what I mean? To a certain extent. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's fun to watch them, even if, you know, when they're coming out, it's like I would never, ever go see Fifty Shades of Grey. Well, now it's free and it's kind of funny to watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, and right. there's right, two right. more, you know, so it's like two more movie nights are already planned out. Nice. And one last thing, you know, I was shocked. Taylor and I have been watching a lot of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We've kind of gotten mm-hmm. burnt out on it by like season six or, you know, I think we're on season six and it's just this, the the current mix of women that we're watching is just not really hitting, you know, we're not really interested mm-hmm. in the episodes, but I was absolutely blown away at a person an absolutely unexpected cameo i mean in a million years i never would have imagined seeing this person in any sort of media again let alone real housewives of beverly hills and i tell you dude i (laughs) i like paused it rewound it watched it again couldn't believe it you know, did a whole debrief to Taylor about who this person was. So to set the scene, and maybe you'll be able to guess as I set the scene, Kim Richards, one of the housewives, is a former child star. So she goes to an autograph, one of these like autograph fanfare conventions where get you know all these cringe, cringe autistic people go <laughs> to meet their favorite celebrities that they uh-huh. have s- obsessions over. And it was truly blew my mind, but absolutely made the most sense in the world when during the montage of all of the fans who she met that day, none other than Jeffrey Dean Turner from I Think We're Alone You're Now. You're kidding. I swear to God. He I was swear there? to God. He was there and he met Kim Richards that day and got her to sign That's something. so fucking random. And he was in the show. <laughs> yes. Just a quick cameo in a montage. Like, I don't think they knew he was anybody. You know what I mean? Oh my God. You're going to have to like find this episode and show me this. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick because it's totally worth uh, looking at. It was fucking absolutely hilarious hilarious dude and i i mean i never thought i'd see jeffrey dean turner in any sort of media no again. why would you <laughs> and i don't think they knew unless he was a plant you know what i mean unless he was a hired he couldn't plant. have been i don't think i think that documentary is pretty obscure i think he just was there and they just happened to include him in the scene absolutely hilarious 
And so I'm like, I don't think I've shown Taylor that movie yet, but maybe I have. If I haven't, it's a huge oversight because that's one of my favorite movies of all time. I've, I, well, I've tried to show Abigail, but she refuses to watch it. Not refuses, but she's just like, I don't want to watch a movie about retarded people. Yeah, right. I mean, it she's is. She's like, I don't find that funny. And I'm like, well, well you know, it's like, <laughs> it's creepy. She's like, she finds it more <laughs> creepy than funny. There's a certain level of it that is. Uh... Sad. That is bad, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. I love it. I don't even care. Right. It's a guilty pleasure. Well, not even guilty. I don't feel guilty about it. No. No, I don't feel guilty about it. I'll still give it a five-star review. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, here it is. He's literally in the thumbnail. Good. I don't have to, like, actually pull up, you know, find the scene. So it's, like, already here. Here we go. Jeffrey Dean That's Turner. crazy. Isn't that insane? <laughs> Isn't that absolutely insane? You would yes. never expect to see this man again. And yet, in the exact place that you would expect to see him, he's there. <laughs> so you're funny. right that is the exact place you would expect to see him and he's still taking the same photo that he would take with tiffany and you know kim, yep. kim looks a little uncomfortable because i'm sure he did some <laughs> sort of sh very uncomfortable spiel in front of uh well you know uh back when we were in the witch mountain uh i was actually i was seeing a tiffany concert uh, yep mm, <laughs> like, something absolutely ridiculous but yeah, I I could not believe that when I uh that's crazy. When I saw him. So honestly, I got to I I really want to own that movie because I don't want to be tied to that movie getting eventually like blacklisted since it's, you know, somewhat controversial. I want to be able to watch that movie for the rest of my life. That's I how agree. good I, I think it is. I want to show my kids that movie. It's so good. And despite I don't think it's exploiting the fact necessarily that they're it's exploiting the fact that they are stalking this woman and it just right. so happens to be that they're retarded <laughs> right. but i don't think when you're, la you're you're laughing at how absolutely ridiculous what they're saying is not the fact that they're retarded most of the time you know what i mean you're not laughing because jeffrey dean turner is retarded you're laughing because his retardation makes him love tiffany <laughs> you're, you're gonna find this you're gonna find this interesting i just looked up his imdb He's in something else. Oh, shit, He's really? Not even listed as a cameo in Real Housewives. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's literally a spl like literally like a second. It's insane how quick he popped up. I was like, no way. Was that? <laughs> and it was. He's in something called Hot Package. Entertainment news set in a parallel universe featuring clips of the dark alleyways of the television landscape. What? <laughs> Sounds like an adult swim program. It does. I've never heard of this. It aired for two years. Oh, yep. Here he is. Jeffrey Dean Turner. Hot pat. Yep, there it is. That's so weird. What the fuck? That's so weird. This man, I mean, I want to see him in more things. I would love to get, you know, Jeffrey Dean Turner in our content. I'd love to work right. with the man. <laughs> I mean, a, a visionary genius. I'd love to interview him. Oh, yeah. I'd love to talk to him and see, you know, mate, does he still love Tiffany? <laughs> I can only imagine. I mean, hey, at the end of the movie, he started to stalk Alyssa Milano. So I wonder if he's still <laughs> stalking her. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. Does Tiffany still have a restraining order on you? You know, these are the kind of questions we need to ask. But you know who I really want to, I would really prefer to talk to Kelly McCormick. What the hell is that woman up to? You know, you, I, you can't find her. She might her. be I, dead. She could be dead. And, that, and that's just... 10% of 11% of my capabilities. <laughs> so, oh my god. She very well could be dead, you know. She could you know, be. She was probably different. she might have killed herself. She might have just changed names. You know, if she could I, just be If I can't be with Tiffany then put me in fucking shackles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's I love that. a really good impression. Movie. I love that movie, dude. I think that's the kind of filmmaking we should all aspire to. So fucking funny. Completely. I agree. love these like slice of life. You know, I I I can I somehow put like set the table setting documentary, and I think we're alone now in like the same like sweet spot of documentary where it's just this like really obscure slice of slice life of that life, you yeah. get, and I love it. I love it. Also, For the Birds uh, that was on Netflix. A little less, but that lady who had, like, 80 waterfowl at her house, and they end up getting oh, taken yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. By the, and she's like, this is ridiculous, as they're, like, 
taken out like <laughs> skeletons of birds. Poor lady. I mean, Minolomus. That one, yeah, that one wasn't like the same style. Yeah. I love a good raw documentary about poor people, I guess. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, well, folks, until next time, we'll we'll catch you when we catch you. Episode 152 hits you next week, I guess. <laughs> until then, folks, stay mate. I'm just a small town boy from Appalachia.